Hello and welcome to Teen Mom Trash Talk. This is episode 137. I'm your host, comedian Tracy Carnazzo, joined by my co-host, Noelle Winters Herzog. Hello. Hey, Noelle. Thanks so much for being here today. We're here to talk about season one, episode four of 16 and Pregnant. Talk about a throwback. Right? We're here to talk about Ebony. Mm -hmm. Do you remember Ebony? Well, now I remember Ebony right. after watching it. I did watch this one originally. Right. Um, Ebony and Josh. <laughs> yeah, well, this was season one. Yeah, this was a while ago. I, I'm telling you, you are the one who made me watch 16 and Pregnant. I'm so glad that I changed yeah, my life. you did. You were like, Noel, this show, like, you have to watch it. You're going to so love it. And I started watching it. And I was like, oh, this is interesting. It was filmed on my old camera. Yes, it was. Uh-huh. What Your happened? Nextel camera? It was filmed on my Nextel phone <laughs> that didn't have a camera. <laughs> it was. It was filmed this on my was, beeper. This was bad. Uh huh. It was filmed. It was filmed on my two way pager. Yeah, <laughs> with no video capabilities. Mm -hmm. What is it's so bad? This? It's so bad, guys. If you're listening to this, you are a fan of ours. Obviously, we're a fan of yours. Mm -hmm. So make sure you join the Patreon at patreoncom slash podcast because we have so much bonus content that it is crazy. And make sure you're following us at Teen Mom Podcast on Twitter and Teen Mom Trash Talk on Instagram. Ooh, yeah. So let's start it. Um, I am going to um, make my voice a little bit louder. Okay. You like that? I like it. Okay. I, I like that you broke the fourth wall. <laughs> I did. I broke all the walls. Uh-huh. There's I'm no like, walls. I'm like the Kool-Aid man. <laughs> I just break all these walls. You can't stop me. Can't stop, won't stop. So when I was younger, yeah. Kool-Aid man. I've always wanted a Kool-Aid man pitcher. Yeah? Since I was little, like a red one. Did you get one? No. Oh. So, but there used to well, have Well, you don't like, get a red one. You get a clear one. It's whatever... I don't know. I just know when I was little, they used to have like things in the paper you could send away for. Yeah, remember that? My dad sent away for that. And then these ice cream cups that looked like they were melting. Yeah. They never came. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Do you remember like sending away? Yes. And then like you wait for like months and then sometimes it arrives and then sometimes it doesn't. That was the thing. And it's like six to 12 weeks yeah. or something. And then you send like $3 in cash. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. Or, or like a pay a cash on delivery or something COD. Uh -huh. <laughs> is that funny Do you remember when they used to advertise things on tv and it would be like no CODs? yeah oh of course i like, remember what that what is a cod yeah uh-huh i don't understand a cod so i have this appliance guy that we both get appliances from yes he works um he's like a distributor he's the and best. he does cod and he always says to me okay do you want it cod i love that and i'm like what year is this right i love that should I send away for my dishwasher? Uh huh. I'm telling you. And then I think about that all the time. Like, how did these people keep my $3 that I was supposed to have these ice cream cups and a Kool-Aid man? No, well, my, the first thing that I ever bought, quote unquote, online uh -huh. was a skateboard. Online? I bought it online. There was like a form to fill out. Uh huh. I had to email this uh -huh. form and give my mom's credit card number. Uh -huh. And it just never came. But really? it never charged her either. See, that's a shame. I I remember doing that on my gateway computer. Yeah, I bought um a deck and like trucks and wheels and like I was gonna like build my own Trace skateboard. Is talking another language right now. I don't know it. I was gonna. I was like a you know because I was a skater. I know. <laughs> You were a skater. Yeah, I was girl. like, I'm gonna I'm gonna customize my my board. I'm gonna get like some grip tape and like make like a nice like You're saying like womp 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 to yeah. me right now. That's cool. Yeah. You're cool. I I mean, it never came. So yeah. I wasn't that cool. I mean, that's fine. My Kool-Aid man picture <laughs> never came either. But it's funny. I was thinking about that. I'm like, when the hell was the last oh, we'll time you sent Amazon away? For this. Yeah. Let's talk about Ebony. She's from Colorado Springs. She's 17 years old and she's a military brat. Right. She lives with only her mom mm -hmm. and she's dating Josh. She's been dating him for a year and he lives with his parents. Mm -hmm. They're both seniors mm -hmm. and they're in junior ROTC because they both want to be in, in the, the military. Air Force. In the, yes, in the Air Force. Can I ask you? I don't really know about ROTC. Okay. So this is kind of like a junior military, basically? So basically, it's like a pro... It's like how you join band. Okay. You join okay. fake military Got in it. school. You march. So you and get an idea of how it's going to be. You, like, have to wear a uniform, and, like, sometimes it's at 6 o'clock in the morning, and, like... You're okay. basically being tortured. You're not allowed to have eyebrows. She has no eyebrows. You're not allowed to have eyebrows at all. That, that's the number one rule in the military. No they're eyebrows. Like, they're like, <laughs> men have to shave their head. Women, you don't have to shave your head, but you do have to shave your eyebrows. Her eyebrows are, like I've said before, they're 
they're running away from each other. She needs to be arrow uh, dynamic. Yes. For the Air Force. <laughs> She's like a swimmer. Uh huh. Yes. Like Michael Phelps shaves all his body, his body hair. hair. She had to shave her eyebrows okay. so that she could be. Because what they do in ROTC when you're in the Air Force is they pretend that your body is a plane and they launch you into space. Oh, okay. So basically a bunch of guys hold you. Yes. It's almost like cheerleading. Okay. Or is it like that thing? What is that sport where you walk and you have the stick? And you jousting? Yeah. No, no, no. Not jousting. Where you're running. And oh. You have the stick and you hop on Vaulting. It. Yeah. That's what it's like. We yes. go into space. And she pretends that she's an airplane. Oh, okay. And she has like grenades in her hand and she throws them. I don't think I want to join ROTC. <laughs> I don't think it's for me. Well, you have too many eyebrows. Uh-huh. I have all the eyebrows. You wouldn't even go fast. No, I would be the slowest in ROTC. <laughs> <laughs> thank god my eyebrows are tattooed on because i would be so fast oh my god tracy you'd be fat you excel at everything you do you would be wonderful that was so nice you do you, you, you think that i would be a good airplane yeah i do i feel like i don't know many things that you would not be good at you wouldn't be good at like licking subway poles no you know? i would not like, be good at that. About i mean i could be good at that right but, but that's not something you choose it's not something i want to do at right. all but i do absolutely want to do that yeah like i want to be good uh-huh I want to be good at a lot of things. You know what I really want to be good at? And what? I'm not. Sorry, guys, that we're just like going on and on about ourselves. But like, uh-huh. I'm not a good dancer. Okay. But I pretend that I am but in my head. But you have fun. Okay. Thanks a lot, Noel. Well, I feel like you have fun. That's something you tell a bad dancer. <laughs> I mean, I'm not a but great dancer. But you have dancer. such a pretty face. Right. I know. Oh, I know. One of those. Right. Uh, but I'm more to me like, is it really about that? Like, you I want to be a triple threat. Fun. A singer, Mm -hmm. a dancer, and and an actress. Yeah. That is you. I know. That's what I want to be, but I'm just not. So I feel like you should sing. I don't know why. Remember when I was a tap dancer? Yes. I was taking tap dancing lessons as an adult. It was not that long ago. Yeah. You also did a braiding class. I did. I did a hair braiding class. I did a a crocheting class. These are who I this is who I am. I didn't know you did a crocheting class. That's pretty cool. I did. Yeah. Um, so let's get back to Ebony. Sorry, guys. (laughs) So Ebony and Josh want to join the Air Force right. and they're both juniors. Uh, they're both. Uh, yeah. Right. They're both. They're, no, they're both. Seniors. No, they're in junior they're both, ROTC. Yes. And right. they're both seniors. Uh-huh. And guess what, guys? What? She's pregnant. 27 weeks. I love when they reveal that. Like you didn't know. It's like you, oh, I only see her from the neck yeah. up. Right. Yeah. And then they're like, but that's not going to happen because right. I'm pregnant. Uh-huh. And you hear like, bing. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. And you see like a shiny belly. Mm-hmm. So she's 27 weeks pregnant. It's January. And right. Rebecca was super upset. Yes. That's um, her mom. Yes. She had told them to use protection. And they didn't. And they didn't. Now, Josh's parents also talked to him about sex. And uh, yeah. But I feel like his dad didn't talk until like later in the episode. I loved when his dad yelled from I the know. couch. I was like, that's my dad. I know. It was your dad, though. It was. <laughs> he was like, what the fuck, man? Yeah. I and was then like, it's like, oh, my oh God. he my, speaks. My when he speaks, he means it. Yes. Yep. <laughs> so uh, she, uh, so Josh's parents talked to him about yeah. sex. So now she's in school. Right. And she has her Victoria's Secret tote bag mm-hmm. because Victoria's Secret sponsors yes. uh, 16 and Pregnant, clearly. And she's handing out baby shower invites like it's a flyer to a reggae party. Oh, I know. To a reggae party. To a rave. <laughs> what? She's just handing out like, oh, did you get an invitation? Oh, no. Here you go. Here it's you go. Like, one for oh. you. And people are like throwing them in the garbage. Right. People are like, cool. But we didn't even see her baby shower. No. That Isn't was that weird. Yeah, I thought that, that was pretty weird. That should have been filmed, but maybe they couldn't film it because, like, I don't know. Maybe they didn't have time. I don't know. It's not exactly like so many things happened I know. here. I mean, the cameraman was using my beeper to film this, so who knows? Maybe my beeper went dead. Yes. His pants, by the way, couldn't be lower. Josh's. Okay. The entire dress code yeah. of this episode. <laughs> it is bad, Tracy. What is happening? Like, it looks like it's worse than it's like it's nothing i wore like in the 90s or the 2000s like i didn't dress like this okay ever. but this wasn't that long ago this was 2010 i just fainted right wasn't it to, i mean here's the thing here two, let's see what the birthday is because i wrote down the birthday of the baby 2010 the birthday of the baby was uh 2009 Okay, so that was 2000. It's 11 years ago. Okay, that's not that long ago. In 2009. I was in my late 20s. I was um, 
working at my like third media yeah. job. I had a full time job. Yeah. yeah. I was like 26. I was not dating anybody whose pants were down to their ass. No. But I also like she's wearing bell bottoms and like high top sneakers in one scene. I didn't even understand what was happening. That's what I mean. And like a LuLaRoe Ill- top. They were all, yes, they were yeah. all, like, everything she wore was ill-fitting. Yes. And I think it was less a reflection of the times and more of a reflection of her. Yeah, that's true. Because mm-hmm. I mean, she, when you really think about it, like, cause you see her in her prom dress eventually, yeah. she's not that big. No, she's not. But her clothes made her look her so Her clothes much are bigger. like maybe a seven to an eight X. Yes. Yes. And it's mm-hmm. funny cause it's like Josh isn't even big. So it's not even like she's wearing she's not his wearing clothes. She's not wearing his clothes. Mm-hmm. I know. So I don't know what's going on. I don't know who purchased these outfits for her. Whoever did should be in trouble. For sure. Uh Now, let's get into it. So now her classmate, one of her classmates, Mm -hmm. who was a white guy, Mm -hmm. he made a great statement. They, they, nobody in this class like liked the fact that she was pregnant. Basically, I, I've <laughs> never seen kids so judgmental, angry, and angry. Like, yeah, this was like. This was like a pro-life rally. It was like, I'm not saying you don't respect yourself, but you don't respect yourself. He, this is a quote. Did you, do you have the quote down? No. I have the quote down. His, the classmate said, if girls had respect for themselves, they would keep their legs closed. Uh-huh. I love toxic men. I know. And I'm thinking, I'm like, was that Donald Trump? That was Trump. When he, in his youth? Yeah. Yeah. That I was like, how are you such a toxic yeah, man? That was awful. Who taught you to say this? Uh-huh. And he was like, and also if women get raped, it's their own fault. What was she wearing? (laughs) I mean, he didn't say that, but he did not say that. Right. Well, it's her fault for wearing a bikini. Right. Uh Uh-huh. At the pool. Uh Uh-huh. In the summer. Mm Mm-hmm. In 100 degree weather. Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Why did she dress like that if she didn't want me to rape her? Right. She wanted it. This kid plays lacrosse. (laughs) He's the the head of the lacrosse. You're right. Team. Oh, God. So, uh, hashtag Colorado. Yes, really. It sounds great there. She's wearing the biggest plaid work jacket I've ever seen in my life. That was what my dad wore to work every day, right? My dad literally wore this every day to work. So did my dad. Your dad and my dad, Carhartt. Yes. Plaid on the outside, but like also lined. Yeah. My husband wears my father's Carhartt. Oh, that's so cute. Yeah, isn't that cute? Okay, so... But my dad wore like an extra large one. Right. She wore like a 10X one. I couldn't believe how big it was. As soon as I saw it too, and I was like, oh, Ed Winters gave her this. Yeah. So this is when she has the bell bottoms. <laughs> yes. On. But they're the belliest bell bottoms I've ever seen in my life. They start at the knee. They the start at the knee, but they're also like maybe a size 20. Yeah. They're definitely extra flary. But they're like a size 20 uh. and she's like a size eight. Right. So like, I think here's what happened. I think people were like, oh, she's pregnant. So just we have to get her the biggest clothes. So ever. drape her in a tent. Yeah. So get you her moo moos. Omar, the tent maker, uh-huh. made these pants for uh-huh. her. I couldn't believe it. So she goes to the mall with her two friends. Right. What are their names? I don't know. Oh, I will tell you. Tell me. Cowboy and Lauren. Here's the thing. I'm going to tell you when I write notes i don't always look at the screen so noel yeah his name because i know later on there she has a friend named ocean noel mm-hmm. his cowboy. name is cowboy but is that his a nickname or his i'm gonna say it's his name they're in colorado and you wonder why these people are so pro-life guys if you what uh listen to our last episode with mackenzie mckee uh-huh you will know that cowboy is actually mackenzie's son in the future uh-huh and so, Joe shot or whatever. Let me, let me tell you. So, uh, if you guys listened to the last episode, we were talking about Mackenzie yeah. McKee, and she wanted to name her daughter Doe shot. Yes, if it was a girl, and but it Buck wasn't shot. Well, if it was a guy. Yes. Yes. Okay. So someone said, uh, <laughs> in the group, in our group. So if you guys want to go to our group, it's uh, Teen Mom Trash Talk Podcast listeners. Someone was like, hey, Tracy, I can't believe Tracy said that. That was so funny that she said that she was going to name her daughter Doshot. And someone was like, was that real? And then someone's like, no, she was just making fun of them. And I was like, oh, no. Oh, no, it was real. That was a quote yeah. from the episode. Like, yeah. this is not, I'm not that funny. This was, I mean, you are that funny, but not this that wasn't funny. that time. No, yeah, she said, she said if it was boy, it was going to be buckshot. If it was a girl, it was going to be Doshot. And it was like, what? I think Mackenzie helped Cowboy's dad and mom <laughs> name her him. Cowboy and Lauren. Uh-huh. So her friend with all the piercings, who was like kind of like the third wheel, because yes. I feel like Cowboy and Lauren were yes. like a fake couple. 
her friend with the piercings is wearing the same oversized work jacket. I think that that was a thing, though. Okay, I don't think it came here to us. Okay, well, I mean, I remember like back in like the Blossom days. Okay, Noel, this is 2009. Oh, yeah. I keep forgetting that because it looks like it's shot on a beeper. So I forget <laughs> that it's not that old. <laughs> She's wearing... Maybe, do you think that they were like union workers? Oh, maybe. 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 Also, <laughs> she is wearing the biggest sweatpants I've ever seen in my whole life. She, okay. She, you know what she's wearing? She's wearing walk of shame sweatpants. Yes. yes. She, it's like she had sex with Biggie Smalls and she's walking down like Nostrand Avenue. Yeah. Back home to Colorado. Yeah. That's exactly what she looks like. And he's like, Hey girl, take my sweat. She's just missing. <laughs> She's missing like a halter top because, you know, the walk of shame. It's like from the club the <laughs> yes. night before. And like her heels. Yes. And sweatpants. And sparkles all over her. My, I'm body telling you, my old roommate, when she lived downstairs from me, I can't tell you how often I saw her do the walk of shame. Oh, she I know. She tried and to then, do it on a bicycle once. You know, it's really funny. She falls a lot. She fell off the bicycle yeah. like three times. And I was just standing on the balcony, LOLing. I love that. Uh-huh. All right. So her mom calls. Uh, yeah. No, he calls his mom, right? So he because can sleep over. He can sleep <laughs> over. Because I think that that's a normal thing to do when you're so 17. So do I. I mean, you're 17 years old. You can't and just not go home. His mom was like, oh, let me talk to her mom to make sure you're to really confirm. there. And to make sure yeah. you can stay over. And then Ebony's like, I can't believe that the father of my baby has to call his mom. But when I would sleep at your house, I used to have to call from your house. So it would come up like on the caller ID. Yeah. That's just what, that was normal. That was. You're a kid. Yeah. I don't know. You're a kid. Yeah. Isn't that supposed to be like how it is? Like, I understand you took a load, but you're a kid. Right. You're just taking loads as a teenager. Well, they uh-huh. want to move to Hawaii. We find out. I mean, me too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, do you know that the cost of living that's is right. the highest in Hawaii? Okay. Yes. And they're also engaged. I know. I and they're both they're 17. Engaged. Uh-huh. But he's like, I don't know if I want to get married. Like we're having a baby. Like, let's just do the one thing. And she's like, I, but I like that. She's like, oh, I would have second th- i would have like thought this through more had i known he had second thoughts about getting married and really it's like, and it's like are you kidding yeah so she goes to a teen parenting support group that was not fun that was not a support group that was a that was a nightmare group that was a uh-huh. scare you group yeah also why is she always wearing mardi gras beads as she necklaces? is always wearing mardi gras beads yeah <laughs> uh-huh Okay, also, one of the girls in the support group mm-hmm. has the greasiest blue bang I've ever seen in my life. She has one bang like Caitlyn. Uh-huh, and it's the greasiest, and it's the bluest. It's it's a Marge Simpson color. Uh-huh. And she it is... sprayed avocado oil on it by mistake. <laughs> That's what she did. Instead of hairspray, she put avocado oil. Well, she so now we see her at the drill team. Mm-hmm. And she has to sit out of the drill team because she is not aerodynamic anymore. Yeah, I mean, I guess the baby's weighing her down from space. Yes. So her mom said she was talking to her mom and her mom's like, listen, after you give birth, you have to wait six months before you could join the air. Which Force. I didn't know that either. OK, well, we find out a lot. Mm-hmm. So she goes to visit Javi uh, in Delaware to recruit her. Right. Kale's ex-husband. Uh huh. You know, he's a recruiter now. I didn't know that. Yeah. I thought you were just being silly. No, I didn't know Javi's that. Javi's a Air Force recruiter. now. I mean, I guess I could see that. Yeah. He, I think that would be good for him. I wonder if he has a booth at the mall, like where Kale used to work, where he used to stalk her. 100%. Uh-huh. Oh, my God. Can you imagine all the girls he hits on? I was thinking the same As thing. they walk by, uh-huh. he's like, yo, hey, ma. Join this army. <laughs> <laughs> join this army of two. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You want to join this army of one? Uh-huh. Anyway, so we go and we find out that uh, her mom, not so right on this maybe you should have done a little bit more research yeah i feel like nobody even asked questions you know like like, beforehand right Right. also if you're in the air force mom you should know that you can't have two parents in the air force where's the baby gonna go when you get deployed and it's you know what i have to tell you i felt dumb watching it because i'm like no way oh where's the baby gonna go right where's the baby gonna go the baby maybe the baby's gonna go to space you think shave off his eyebrows (laughs) That's not aerodynamic, though, because you would have to strap the baby to Ebony. Okay. And then it would be the same way she's not aerodynamic when she's pregnant. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's not functional. Right. Uh Uh-huh. So only one of them can enlist. Mm -hmm. And she just carries her water jug everywhere like she's on Weight Watchers. You know what? (sighs) That's funny. You know what bothers me is that she automatically assumes, all right, then it'll be Josh. 
Like, why couldn't it be her? Nowadays, it would be like, well, why couldn't it be well, her? Well, because she needs Josh to go now. Oh, uh, that's true. So yeah. I get that. I guess because I feel bad for her because it's like she was like totally shot down because that's what she really wanted to do. It's very hard for me to relate. And I will say this. Like, I know that this sounds like kind of ignorant, yeah. but like it's hard for me to relate to want to go. Well, that's true. Army. Yeah, I, I I, can get that, too, because I mean, that's willingly putting yourself through stress. Yeah, like this is like I understand that it's like a great career, yada, yeah. yada, yada. But like, I don't know, like I can't relate to that Scary. at all. Um, I'm sure that she was super bummed that she couldn't she go into the Air Force. Out. Her entire life has been flipped upside down i mean listen with the pregnancy yeah. not being able to join the air force like mm-hmm. all these things josh not knowing if he's gonna marry her and uh i think therapy would really really be helpful for her i think so too she doesn't have a lot of time though no and she doesn't seem to have a lot of like friends to support her i don't know if she drives i don't think she drives i don't think she does much i think she's home most of the time I think that she should use BetterHelp Online Counseling Mm -hmm. because BetterHelp Online Counseling is a counseling service that you can use from the comfort of your own home. You could do it. Use it on your phone. On your phone. You could do it on your computer, on your iPad. You could text. You could video chat. It is my favorite service. It's my favorite thing that I've discovered from doing this podcast. Yes, I agree. Because I never would have known about this. Yeah. And it's just so wonderful. Uh, I have a therapist that I talk to. I Mm -hmm. use my iPad and I video chat with her. Noelle, you have a therapist. You haven't made an appointment, though. I haven't made an appointment. You're a bad girl. I have to. I have to tell you, though, my therapist got me through my move. That was like such a traumatizing thing for me. And it was it helped so much because I didn't have to go to an office too yeah. because I was so busy all the time. You could just do it in the back of yeah. a U-Haul. Yeah, that's true. You can right on your phone. You could do it wherever you want. You could you, text. It's worldwide, guys, mm-hmm. and it is secure. It's convenient. It's professional, and best of all, it's truly an affordable option. Teen Mom Trash Talk listeners get ten percent off your first month with discount code Trash Talk. So why not get started today? Go to BetterHelp H E L P dot com slash trash talk for 10 percent off your first month with discount code trash talk that's better help help dot com slash trash talk awesome yeah. now let's get back to ebony uh now josh goes uh skipping school with his friends yeah he's bad and now she's like doing homework with him and she's trying to make him concentrate she seems like she kind of has it together yes and he drags her down. Yeah. Yep. And he, she's just, he's playing with the cat in the box. Okay. But what the hell was that? I've never seen anything like this before. Is this what people do? They put cats in a box? Cats they like play? boxes to play. Yeah. They like to play peekaboo. Oh, okay. I didn't know this was a thing. I've never had a cat. Yeah. Okay. My friend's uh, cat last night, she posted on Instagram and the cat was in a paper bag. Oh, all right. Playing a game. Because Matt's cat used to sit in like a basket in his room all the time. Yeah. I remember that. They play like games. Yeah. Okay. Does Matt still have a cat? Yeah. His parents have a yeah, cat Yeah, you now. say used yeah. to. Like it was dead. I got nervous. Oh, no, no. It didn't die. It's just like it, if it was it's not in my part of house, his life I would have died. Right. They're just separated now. Do you let him talk about the cat at home? or you're He's like, allowed to talk about the cat, but he doesn't talk about the cat like it's his anymore. Okay, good. Because now the mother, you know, has his mom has taken claim. Right. You're like, move on, Matt. Yeah. I mean, it's just not yours anymore. <laughs> She's dead to you now. It's like what you did when he had, because he had kids from another marriage and you made him just like totally. Yeah, he doesn't have them anymore. Not, you were no like, they're not kids. yours anymore. That was a That was another life. life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny? People do that. Oh, we have a friend who did that. <laughs> I yes. Know. No, you're right, though. I'm more than one person that I know of have done that. It's sick. <laughs> so but it's interesting. It's comforting to know. It's you- like, oh, wait, you can have kids and not like them and, and just have another life. You don't have to it's comforting them? to know that there's a way out. No, it's always, without having to murder them all. Listen, I'm very claustrophobic. I always need a way out. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of a way out, uh, she goes for an ultrasound. Right. And so Josh needs to borrow the car to go to the ultrasound. So his parents are like trying to be strict, I guess. Yeah. After the fact. And they're like, OK, recite the rules. Yeah. Huh. And he's like, no, mom, I don't want to. And right. it's like, it's drive lame. the speed limit. Don't right. smoke. Also, you smoke. Also, you smoke in a car with your pregnant girl. Like that's even Dude. worse. Yeah. So this is her thirty-five week checkup. Right. And how many preg- how many weeks pregnant are you when you give birth? Thirty-eight to forty. Okay. Okay. So now also, uh, he said that he was using a condom. Remember, he said yes. I was using birth control. Uh-huh. They ask her, "Were you using birth control when you got pregnant?" She goes, "No." No. Yeah. Cool. Now she's one hundred and sixty-four pounds. She had gained forty pounds. And she's not. She doesn't look big at all. Look, I think she looks great. Yeah. She is at my goal weight. Yeah. She's prom dress shopping and she's crying because she can't fit into anything. Now, 
I felt like her mom was like sort of supportive. Okay. I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna tell you something. Yeah. I had a flashback. During okay. This. Tell me. I remember trying on clothes yeah. when I was younger. I mean, I'm talking about like I was probably like ten right. or eleven. When you were a little I was really monkey. heavy, yeah. right? When I was younger. And I remember trying on all these clothes in a dressing room and nothing fit me. And I was because they didn't so give you sad. they didn't give you the right size. They didn't give me the right size. And I started crying. And my mom was there. And I was like, I don't want to feel this way. Like I feel right. like nothing fits me. I was so upset. I never forgot about this. And my mom was just kind of like, Oh, oh. You know, you're okay. And it's like, oh. Okay, but get me, little. first of all. I feel like this is how she Get acted. me the right size, Right, one. I mean, first of all, get me the right size. <laughs> I'm not a 3T anymore, you know? <laughs> but, That's but, like, number one. It's something that I watched this and it stuck out to me. It's like, you could be a little more supportive. She's like, I'm supportive. huge. And it's like, no, you're not huge. You you're have not a huge. baby inside you. have a baby you. in you. But she wasn't. She's not like chunky. She wasn't no. chunky at all. And I thought that her mom did a piss poor job so of like I. building her up on this. Also, one. these dresses. Okay, listen, it is 2009. And I think that that was the styles. I thought they all looked good on her, though. Uh, no, but I mean, more like the second one just looked like a beach dress. Yes. yes. I mean, they were going a little flowy. Yes. It was like a maxi. That's exactly what but it was. But she didn't look stupid in any of them, she really. Didn't look, and I'll tell you, she didn't look fat in any of them either. I no. just think she was... I think she's always been a small girl. Yes. I mean, know? considering she yeah. was 164 pounds and she had gained 40 pounds. Yes. But, I mean, I don't know. that's less than I weigh, her original yeah. weight. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, they're getting ready for the prom and she comes out in her yellow satin dress with... So tw- cute. ...with twisties in her hair. I mean, that speaks of the times. But what does it? it? No, no, actually, no. Because I had twisties in my hair for my prom. But guess what year my prom was? What year? 2000. So no, I, 2002. I think I had twisties in my hair for like your sweet 16. Yeah, 2000 yeah. and 2002. Yeah. All of those things, that was when the twisties were in. That's true. I think Colorado's a little behind the times. Here's the thing. Okay. Is Ocean, her friend, uh-huh. pregnant? I don't think so. So, because when you see her in this part, she looks way fucking pregnant. You really? You see her later on, she doesn't look pregnant at all. Interesting. So, I can't figure it out. I don't know. Yeah. Well, uh, so Josh is picking everyone up. Yes. In his mom's smoking car. Yes. His they go to the wrong car. house for one of the girls. Yes. But he was super nice to her. He, he was, was like, nice. I don't think he's mean to her. No, I don't think he's a mean person uh-uh. at all. So now also, so now they're at the prom. Yeah. What dance are they doing all in a row? So I was thinking, okay, so if it was the new times, I'd be like, is that the, like the Cupid shuffle? Was that the cha-cha slide? I don't know. Because it wasn't the electric slide. No. Because I know you're the queen of the electric slide. I like the electric slide. slide. What? what do you mean? Because <laughs> I just feel like. If I'm going to go somewhere with you, say you and I are at a wedding. Yeah. You're going to dance to the electric slide. Yeah, I am. Because I, I know, know you are. You can feel it. It's electric. <laughs> <laughs> I like the electric slide. I think it was a cha-cha slide. I think it's a good song too. Yeah, so do I. It's just fun. <laughs> I Maybe I'll listen to it on the way home. I like it. <laughs> maybe we'll sing it for BS. Makes Who me knows? smile. All right. Guys, make sure that you're uh, subscribing to our Patreon <laughs> because you get over 100 episodes of bonus content and we're going to be recording BS Not Team Mom Related, which is our bonus podcast right after this. That's and right. we might sing the electric slide. We might. We might do the electric slide. I could try. You're not going to see it, but we're going to do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Boogie, woogie, All right. Woogie. So Josh, uh, <laughs> he gets called into his counselor's office. And his dad is there. I would have pooped in my pantalone. If I saw my father in the office, my father never went to anything like your dad. Yeah. It was always your mom. It was always my grandmother. Uh huh. If I saw and my I feel like father, his, yes, and I feel like his yes. dad's the same way. Like when on Roseanne, when Dan showed up something, they right. all said, we thought you were dead because he never went to anything. You know what's funny anything. though? I would have shit myself because it's crazy, but I also would have been less scared because I feel like my dad was way less scary. Like I Your dad was way less scary. I could have probably convinced him not even to tell my mom. Oh, yeah. I would have been like, mommy knows about this already. There's no reason to even tell her. Uh, I told her already. Just be quiet. Oh, all right. I mean, if you ever wonder if Tracy is manipulative, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> But you just know who you can no, get away with. No, you're right, with. though. Like, I remember, listen, when I used to be like, can I go out? Can I go out on Friday? My dad would be like, why are you asking me? Right. I have zero authority. Uh-huh. That's true. He's like, do I care if you go out? No. Does your mom? Question mark. I don't know. You I, have to ask her. I can't wait for Matt to have that role. And you do nothing. <laughs> uh, no, he can do nothing. 
Oh, and then I want to have the say. Yeah, like, you can't go out. Right, because I'd be like, the daddy's today. letting me take his car, and my yeah. mom would be like, "Good for him. Good for him." L O L O L. You can't yeah. go anywhere. You were super grounded because you didn't clean your room three <laughs> months ago. That is your mom. I know. Like, I'm surprised you're allowed out now. <laughs> I got to tell you, uh -huh. when I ha I have reoccurring nightmares that I still live with my mom. That sounds awful. It's not good. Yeah, doesn't sound good. So he had. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. 228 absences. I mean, I, how many days in the year there? There's 364 days in the year. Yeah. I'm, I'm guessing like class cuts. Here's the thing. I had 90, like 97 cuts my freshman year of high school. And I remember that being like the biggest deal. That was not good. So what the hell is 200? I know you, you know wonder why I got kicked out of school. I but. know. I wonder why you didn't finish. Uh -huh. Um, when I was in Catholic school, oh, yeah. you couldn't cut class. I was in Catholic school. Right, but in my Catholic school, you couldn't cut oh. class. Because if you were present in your classes and then you weren't present in one, you got suspended automatically. Yeah, they would just make you come in in the morning and do detention. No. We and would I'd be like, detention is way better than going to school. No, no, no. There wasn't an option. And then I went to public school. And I feel like your Catholic school is more public. Yes, it is. Yeah. Uh, and then I went to public school and... It was like the first day of school and they were like, all right, listen, in this class, you can only have seven cuts. If you have more than seven cuts, you fail the class. And I'm like, wait a minute. What do you mean? Right. They're like, you can't cut this class more than seven times. Right. And I'm like, I could cut this class seven times. I can leave now. Bye. See you yeah. later. Uh -huh. My, my, uh, my go-to move. Right. Was, uh, I was going to go to the counselor. Okay. Like I always pretended I had a lot of problems uh -huh. and I'd be like, Hey, uh, I'm actually going to sit with the counselor this period. And they're like, okay. Uh huh. And they're like, obviously she has a lot of problems. So also my brother, this uh, is a true story. Great. In high school, mm -hmm. he, uh, my parents both, it was me, my brother mm -hmm. and both my parents. And we went to his parent teacher conferences. You went, <clears throat> the whole fam had to go. Why? That was a requirement? That was the requirement. That's weird. The whole fam. So we go to his, he had like a business class, like a business and marketing class. We okay. The, and the teacher's so nice, right? And he's like, you know, Anthony had missed all those assignments, but I understand because of what was going on at home. <laughs> I'm, glad like, to what? I'm glad to see that you guys are back together. <gasps> so he told his teacher that his parents were going through a divorce and he couldn't do his homework because he couldn't concentrate because things were so bad at home. So you're not the only manipulative one. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. And my mom kind of like ate it because she didn't want him to like get fail the class. Uh huh. And she's like, oh, what exactly is going on at home? And he's like, well, you know, the split. And right. she's like, oh, the split. Wow. And then I think she probably beat the shit she out of him. She probably beat him afterwards. The yeah. Isn't that great? Wow. But what do you say for 200 absences? 228? That's crazy. Okay. So he has 228 absences. And he said, because he's stressed out. Same. What does that even mean? Right. I don't know. So his mom's like pretty pissed. And he threatens to leave. And Ebony's crying. And then he says that he got kicked out of his house. I... Is he every guy you've ever met, though? Every like, guy. Full of shit. He is crying. She's crying. His mom comes uh -huh. and is like, get in the car come home and right. he's like no man and then he's like she kicked me out it's 20 degrees out and and you don't let your pregnant girlfriend get in the car no, also nobody's like, wearing a jacket you could drive me home you're just wearing layers of oversized yes. clothing you could um i would have been like i will get in the car yeah, gladly you can meet me at my house but i'm sure. going yeah so now they're at her house and she wants biscuits and he opens crescent rolls and she's pretty pissed and i felt like noel this is your yeah game so um I really take my biscuits seriously. <laughs> I, I love biscuits. And if I wanted biscuits, especially, I can't imagine how hormonal she must be right, right now too. And it's like, I said biscuits. Now, all of those Presents. things that come in the rolls that explode, yeah. no matter what brand they are, to me, they have a weird aftertaste. Okay. They have a taste to them. I've grown to like that taste. <laughs> I do not like that taste. Yeah. I do not. Because one day I was like, ooh, let's get the pizza dough that comes in that can. Yeah. And then it just tasted like the biscuit. And I was like, okay, I can't here's eat the thing. This. They all taste similar. They're just different shapes. Right. I was like, I can't uh -huh. eat this dough. Oh, I like it. Yeah, no. Like I like like my favorite is like the grands. I hate them. Oh, I love them. I hate the this taste is of why, them. How are we best friends? Like, I don't we're know, so different. I can't like there's a, a weird aftertaste. 
You know, I agree with you on there being a bad burn to Kraft macaroni and cheese. When I'm you gonna go swallow you Kraft macaroni and yeah. cheese, it is like swallowing fire that's on fire. Yes. I have to agree with you on that. I don't know about the biscuits, the canned biscuits. I still yeah. jump every time they burst. Though. I don't know. So he <laughs> said that he's going to let his parents chillax. Right. And his parents apparently did not chillax too long. He was chugging OJ out of the bottle in the fridge. He's going to get diabetes. I was like, oh, you're disgusting. So they wanted to grow up. Mm-hmm. And now she's saying that her belly hurts. She's 38 weeks. And right. they're being pretty silly together. I think he's like, they're a nice couple. So Yeah. Okay, so 12 hours later, she starts getting contractions. Right. And she's like, okay, you see this balloon from our baby shower that they did not show on TV? Yeah, I couldn't understand this Okay, part. so she was saying that the balloon's been up in the air. Yes. So she's like, it's a sign that it's dropped to the floor. She's like, it's almost touching the floor. I say that when the balloon touches the floor, uh-huh. that's when I'll go into labor. And that's basically what happened. That's why I couldn't, I didn't get it. So she goes to the hospital mm-hmm. and... Oh, and th- their bet was that if she wins, he has to kiss her big toe. He kissed it. And yeah, he did. Many pictures of him <laughs> kissing it so too. Uh huh. So she pushes the baby out and mm-hmm. both of the moms are there. Nice team. She has pretty good support, she I does. think. She does. They clean the baby so quick and so vigorously. I know. It was a little scary. I was like, why are you so rough? But right. I think that's just like. Yeah. Jocelyn Jade was born on April 29th, 2009, and she was five pounds, 14 ounces. Mm -hmm. And right away, Josh is baby mouth kissing Jocelyn. That's just just the thing. I think they thought it was okay back then. You're going to get her sick. Okay, Uh cool. So they have to keep the cat away from the baby because she's like, you know, the baby. This is like an old wives tale Uh that like the baby like is going to like smother the the, the, the cat's, cat's going to smother, smother the, the baby cuz yep. the baby smells like milk yeah. blah 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 so she's like yeah we have to keep the cat away from the baby next scene cut to the scene yep. the baby and the cat are basically spooning are spooning yes they the are ba- going to burr the half baby half cat <laughs> <laughs> i would be so allergic to that that me too so she needs super tiny socks and the thing, how many times can you send the guy back? Okay, but you know what? This is like a typical man. Uh huh. Of course it is. You're like, I need the small white socks with the fuzz. They uh-huh. bring you black socks. Uh-huh. You're like, hi, hi, hi. I need the Focus. small white socks with the fuzz. Yes. And he's like, how about these giant pink socks? Uh huh. And then she's like, hello. For the baby, uh-huh. this baby that we just had that was at, that came out of me. Uh-huh. Yes. Okay. Do you see the size of her feet? Okay. Let's try to get a sock similar to that size. And then he brings her like Jordan socks. And he's like, what about my dad's socks? Right. Is that what you mean? Do you want them for your feet? Uh-huh. So then he brings the whole drawer Which in. was so funny. Because this is a man. I know. This, where are I the know. scissors? They're in the, the drawer with the scissors. Uh-huh. Where's the drawer with the scissors? Mm-hmm. Where we always keep the scissors. Mm-hmm. What drawer is that? The drawer with the knives. Where do we keep the knives? <sighs> I opened it and I don't see them. But there's five pairs of scissors there. Can you look with your eyes? No. Can you just come here? Matt did the dishes today. Oh, God. As he's doing it, uh-huh. and he, then he's putting them away. He dried them and put them uh-huh. away. And he's like, where does this go? Okay. I did this last night. Okay. Uh, he said, uh, where does this go? It was yes. a mug. And uh-huh. I said, it goes in the mug cabinet. Yes. And he scoffed at me. And I was like, I don't know what that is. Yeah. I don't know. Like, are you mad that we have a, a mug uh-huh. cabinet? So he said, where is the mug cabinet? So I pointed. He opened it up. All mugs. Uh, amazing. It's like, he op- it's like he opened the door to Narnia. Groundbreaking. Right. Uh-huh. I'm like, where have you been putting the mugs? Right. But that's what I mean. Where, what would you do if I wasn't home? <laughs> we only have so many cabinets. Uh-huh. You so look I'm around. thinking this is what I would do if I was in a stranger's house. But also, this is not a stranger's yes. house. But let's pretend he's never been here before. Uh-huh. He hasn't lived here for years. Matt hasn't lived with you. Right. No one knows anywhere. Okay. Before you put the dishes away, mm-hmm. just take a little inventory. Yeah. Open up some of the cabinets. Yep. Play the game. You know, like when you play that game, the match game. Yes. And you look under some tiles. Uh-huh. And you're like, okay, so that's where this is. That's where this is. Let's match it up. Open the cabinets. Take a look. Just, you know, survey the area. They can't do it. Cannot do no. it. What happened with Matt? Today, he's like, so he's he's drying things and he's like, uh, where does this, where's the top of this? It was my Yeti. Uh-huh. And he's Why'd like. Why do you say it like that? Like you were slow. How do you say it? Yeti? 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 One word. All right. Well, okay. it was the top of that. And I'm like, uh, I'm like, I don't know, Matt. It's in the sink. And he's like, well, I can't put it away without it. And I'm like. 
Okay, then leave it out. All right. So you- then wait. And then he's like, I'm sorry, but same thing. Where's this mug go? I'm like, with the, mugs. With the rest in the mugs. Open some cabinets. What do you, do you not live here? Use some common My sense. My kitchen is not very big. What size are the baby socks? But that's what I mean. Like, and it's like, uh, come on. Like, you're not this slow. You just want me to do it. Yeah. yeah. You just don't want to look with your eyeballs. Yeah. It's all. Is the it time. tiring to take a look? Yes. Okay, uh-huh. I'm just checking. So the baby's four days old and she's all alone with the baby because he's at school and she's mm-hmm. breastfeeding. Mm-hmm. And um, the baby is just, uh, they say, eat. The baby eats, poops, and dreams. I mean, it sounds like my kind of living. And it seems like that's what Josh does too. Mm-hmm. So he's finally graduating. Uh huh. But she meets with her counselor and she needs to make up credits. So she's going to take night classes. Right. But she turns out that she can, I guess, because Josh is still sleeping. He's not he's getting home on time. Home late. Right. And they have a conversation. And I got to tell you, I honestly don't know what he's saying. No, I listen towards the end. He is a mumble machine. But towards the end, there was some I really felt like he was on drugs. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. I didn't know what he was saying. Like, he turned into a different person. Right, because he was super sweet and like, yeah, he was unmotivated because yeah. he was 17. But then like all of a sudden, so now her friend comes over and she said that she's super sad because Josh isn't helping. Right. So Josh is watching the baby, but he's just laying on the floor. He's nodding off. And she's like, hey, can you take out the trash? And he's like, hello, I'm sleeping. Uh-huh. And she. He's t- not though. She, li- But she literally had to do it. Yeah, because she's like, if I need this done, yeah. I need to do it. So she said that he's not there to help. And he's like, well, listen, I can't help because I have to worry about the Air Force. Right. It's like, what does that even mean? I'm like, this is such a typical guy. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You can't take out the trash mm-hmm. because you're worrying about the Air Force. Yep. I, I feel like it's so relatable to like both yeah. of us. Yeah. Uh-huh. Also, this, so the baby's in the swing. Mm-hmm. The swing is going so fast. Okay. I was thinking like I would feel so car sick. But do you think it's because they're preparing the baby for the Air Force and they want her to be super aerodynamic? Ready to launch. <laughs> they want her ready to launch right there. Maybe they'll just put like a little quick grenade, a baby grenade. Right. Like there. on her back. Yeah. Like in Looney Tunes. Yeah. And then just sh- she'll shoot off. Like Bugs Bunny. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> so she said that she's scared of being on their own and she's the adult in the relationship mm-hmm. and she's given up more than him. And right? that's true. And she didn't graduate. I know. It's sad. But he did. Uh-huh. And now he leaves for the Air Force. She left that. I mean, sh- not that she let that happen, but it's like she sacrificed everything yep. so he could. Absolutely. Yeah. I wonder where she is now. Me too. I'm actually really curious. Maybe we should check in with her. Yeah, that would be awesome. I bet she could use some healthy, easy meals, though, since she's been so busy with the baby. She probably doesn't even have a chance to go shopping. She definitely doesn't have a chance to go shopping. How could she? She's all alone with the baby. I bet she wishes that she had access to HelloFresh. Yes. HelloFresh has mouth-watering seasonal recipes and pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door. It's America's number one meal kit. HelloFresh makes cooking at home fun, easy, and affordable. Sounds perfect for her. It's really fun because you don't have to think about like what's right. for dinner. And that is, Noel. I know. Last night, mm-hmm. we're on the phone. Mm-hmm. You go, what are you making for dinner? And you're like, I don't know. What should I make? And you yeah. were like, I don't know, because Matt's going to come out of the bathroom yes. and he's going to ask me what's for dinner. Yes. And I don't even know. Mm-hmm. It's just so hard. But HelloFresh's pre-portioned ingredients mean there's less prep for you and less food waste. Right. HelloFresh's carbon footprint is 25% lower than store-bought grocery-made meals, too. Very cool. Yeah, and also, here's the other thing. This is great for Ebony. The average trip to the grocery store takes 41 minutes. So that's over 35 hours a year if you go once a week. Wow. I never really thought of it like that. Neither did I. That is scary. Yeah, that's really scary. I made such great roasted vegetables. You know, it's like I went to culinary school. I know. And you would think that I knew all of this stuff. Right. But it it like sparks your memory. It's like, oh, put this together with this. This would be great. Yeah. I made the greatest roasted vegetables. They gave me instructions to cook it much higher. Right. Like on a higher temperature and uh, even longer than I used to. And they were so good. And you love it. Loved it. You can go to HelloFresh.com slash Trash Talk 10 and use code Trash Talk 10 for 10 free meals including wow. free shipping. So you can go to HelloFresh.com, right? Mm-hmm. Slash Trash Talk 10 and use code Trash Talk 10 for 10 free meals, including free shipping. Awesome. All right. Now let's see what's going on with Ebony. 
Hey, Ebony, thank you so much for doing this today with us. Um, we're so happy to talk to you. We just watched your entire 16 and, and Pregnant episode, which was crazy. And so much has yeah. happened since then. So yes. Can you give us an update on what's going on? Well, a lot has been going on. There's a lot that I can't really talk about. Sure. Um, but... Um, since the show's aired, of course, you guys know that I got divorced from um, Josh. Right. So let's let's go back I, just a little bit. Um, so we yeah. just watched your 16 and Pregnant. So we saw you, um, you had Jocelyn, right? And that was in yeah. what year was she born? 2009. 2009. Okay. So we saw that. Been out of touch with everybody. This is my first interview with anybody since. Oh, perfect. Thanks Everything so much for Everything happened. Okay, so, great. So, yeah. Um, I I mean, like, this is pretty much I'm breaking the silence on anything that's happened. Oh, cool. So, yeah. Um, so, wherever you guys want to start, there's a lot of, un, there's a lot of subjects that, I mean, we can't dive too far into. You don't have to talk about but, anything you don't uh, want to talk about. Yeah, no worries. So, so, okay, so um, the last we saw you, you gave birth to Jocelyn. We left off there. Josh was going into the Air Force, and that's all we know, really. Yeah. So um, since the show, we were arrested, um, and that was um, very public. We, went, uh, we underwent a very public arrest. And um, what people didn't know was behind the scenes of that arrest. Mm-hmm was um, that I had actually lost a baby. Oh, my God. I'm um, so sorry. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> I personally suffer um, with major depressive is- issues. Uh, misdiagnosed for years. Right. So I've I've suffered with that. And then when I suffer from anything traumatic, I just downward spiral and I had no idea what was going on with myself. I think a lot of people could relate to that actually. Yes. I, I, um, I mean, it's not, it's not very widely talked about as well as, as, um, just the arrest. Sure. I know the arrest was, it was, it was everywhere, but people just didn't understand that I also got hospitalized during that time. Well, well, to just to back up a little bit. So right after, yeah. um, right after sixteen and pregnant, you and Josh got married. Yes, we got married when we were eighteen. Okay, so it was and, shortly after that. Um, we we moved into um, we moved out to Arkansas onto the base okay. out there in Arkansas, and. Um, we had a pretty good life out there until we lost the baby. And then after we lost the baby, everything just kind of spiraled downwards. I had a friend of ours. Um, she was really worried about us. And to this day, she, um, she saved my life. Is so what just I to say. clarify, you because, lost, you yeah. lost a pregnancy. Yes, I did. Oh, okay. I lost a pregnancy and it was a pregnancy that we wanted of course, um, of course. as well. And, um, Right after that, that's when Jocelyn got taken from us. Right. And um, she went into DHS care for um, about four months. And she was just and staying with a foster family or was it a, a relative? She was staying with a really good foster family, okay. yes. And um, pretty much um, Josh and I got our act together in Arkansas <laughs> No one ever gets their kids back as soon as we got our our daughter back. Like, we got everything together. We were taking therapy together. Um, We were, uh, everything finally fell back into place for us. And we got her back within four months. She was. I'm sorry, you're breaking up a little bit. Oh, sorry. You said you got her back within four months. Yeah, within four months, she was um, living in our home. But in Arkansas, it's really tough to get your kid back within that time. Sure. Because they do, um, I think, every six reviews or something like that. Mm -hmm. And we went on a fast track, that a a new program that they had just began. And um, we... uh, we did really, really well with it, is what I can say. Um, 
uh, we met all of their requirements to get her back home. And we stayed really in really close touch with the foster parents. Okay. With, um, and they were really nice and sweet, and nice Christian couple. So she um, was, she was taken away from you, um, when you mm-hmm. were kind of uh, very depressed and not taking care of yourself and you you guys had gotten arrested and that's why she had been put in care. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, like, the only thing that uh, was, was she was being fed. Sure. <laughs> and, like, other than that, everything, like, even during that time, it's still, like, that's a very traumatic time for me of as course. it is. And so... I black out that time a lot of the things that have happened during that time. A lot of people do that with trauma, of course. Yes. Yes. And and what were you guys arrested for? Um, We were arrested for, um, what was it? It was, it was child endangerment because of the house, right? The condition of the house. And then also um, we had, um, or, or not, we, I had an issue with, um, that synthetic drug spice. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was really, it was, a, I mean, like, even if it wasn't, um, you know, a, it was a hard drug. What is that? Me. What is that drug? It, it was like, what was it? It was so bad. But I even went to um, um, N.A. Right. To and is that like the synthetic marijuana? Product. Yeah, it was synthetic marijuana. Wow. Yeah, and it it causes holes in your brain as as well. Right. And, like, it caused me to, um, I'd get angry if I didn't have it. Um, Like, it was just so bad. That's Um, so scary. Yeah, it was, it was very scary. It was, um, uh, and I dropped down to a hundred pounds. Oh, my God. For my size. That's, like, a scary, scary weight. Right. And my friend seen me like, like that was all during, like right after I lost the baby, she found out about it. She seen my weight. She seen the condition of the house. Right. And she called, um, she called the MPs herself. That was a good friend of mine. Of course. Are you grateful for that? um, I am so grateful for it. She saved my life. And, um, I think that was her intent. So we haven't, we haven't remained friends because of course, like she had to go through the court stuff and I was very angry and not on my medication at all back then, okay. not even the right kind of medication. And what have you been diagnosed all. with? Um, I am officially, I have PTSD and I have, um, major depressive um, disorder. Okay. Both of those. I, um, but PTSD, I've officially been diagnosed with that within the past year. Okay. And um that's also due to and it's due to re trauma throughout the years. I mean I've I've had my therapist says that I probably have had PTSD since I was fourteen. Really? So and, and that was from some family issues that were going on that we didn't see. Fam family issues. I mean like um things that had happened when I was four right. and and above like um, like I'm a very smart individual, but, um, like just making the, and so what ended up there was I ended up getting pregnant right. and not ending up fulfilling my dream, um, to even graduate on time. Right. And I finally graduated school. Um, it, it was in 2018. Oh, well, um, congratulations. I, I, Thank you. Ebony, I'm so, losing yeah, you a little bit. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's quite all right. Uh, so congratulations on graduating. I understand that it took a while and it wasn't exactly your plan, but how exciting is that? It's so hard to go back to school after so much time, and you did it. Oh, it was. It was really difficult to go back to, t- um, to school, but I wanted to, to prove to my girls that I could do it even if it took me a long time. Of course. But I mean, like struggling with your mental health it if it takes years to undergo the stuff that I'm even doing now because I got scared away from uh, treatment yes. for a very long time because it's a stigma that it's not like oh well you're just crazy if you go and get help but I've been um I've been hospitalized uh seven 
seven different times, all for the, the, the fact that nobody diagnosed me right. And I could have been getting help from the beginning. Wow. And, um, and, uh, in 2018, I finally, I tried to commit suicide in 2018. Oh my God. I'm so sorry to hear that. And, um, my girls are, um, my girls, my older two are not with, um, me right now because their grandparents knew back when my youngest, um, my youngest Jay Lynn was about a month old. Mm -hmm. They knew that there was not something mentally okay with me, but they, they thought it was just my depression and that I was not getting help for my depression, Mm -hmm. but it was a lot worse than that. And they were trying to save the girls from my uh, partner at the time. Now let's and back up I, a little bit. And so, I see that. so you were Go with ahead. Josh and you had Jocelyn. Yes. And then after that, um, yes. did, you, did you and Josh have another baby? We did. And her name was Jada. Okay. We had her in 2015. Okay. And um, she's a beautiful girl. She looks just like Josh. Uh-huh. So yes. So okay, and so her, her and, then, and your, so your two oldest, and who were whose care are they in now? Was that um, in Josh's parents' care? Yes, Josh's parents' care, and Josh is up there as well. Okay, and now she does. Um, do you get to see them at all? Do you communicate with them? Right now, um, they have. They've told me I can communicate with them, and and I had a really good relationship with them. But when I got into this relationship with this guy that I got married to, everything changed. Okay, and this with, is who you I mean, had your youngest I, yeah. daughter with? Yes, this is who I had my youngest okay. daughter with. And so I've just been protecting them from this monster. Oh my goodness, so, I'm so sorry that you got into another bad relationship. Now, just to back I'll, up a little... I, would, I wouldn't say that me and Josh had a bad relationship. Well, that's what I wanted to, to talk that. about a little bit. Because, you know... Yeah. Um, we see a lot of, uh, you know, kind of like childish behavior from him, but we don't see like anything too crazy from him on this episode of 16 and pregnant. He was kind of like unmotivated, but you know, he was about 17, 18 years old, but he seemed to really love you and really love the baby. And his family seemed very nice. And, you know, he, he wasn't responsible as he should have been, but Mm -hmm. I didn't see any, uh, crazy behavior when you were having a hard time what was his response was he you know why didn't he step up a little bit more I don't think he knew we we were young when we got together so I mean I don't blame him but when you were when you you were having such a breakdown where you weren't taking care of the house and you know you weren't taking care of your daughter as you should what was he doing what was his part in that I think he buried himself in work. Right. To be honest, I think he buried himself in work and he was dealing with depression himself. I can't speak for Josh. Sure. But now he got arrested I, as well with you because of the conditions in the house. Yes, he did. And okay. um, he was he was released from the military um, okay. on a general discharge. Okay. So and they didn't so, hold anything against him. No, because it was, it was more me and I, I'm taking the blame for that completely. And he knows that. And, um, just because I, I understand he could have stepped up, but when you're young, we were 20 when that happened. Like, how do you know if, if I didn't know how to deal with it? I didn't know that I have PTSD when, when I finally found out what, like I started looking into PTSD and what it causes, what it does to people. And um, it was just textbook what was going on sure. with me. And nobody nobody knew. And it was really hard. And poor Josh, like he had to deal with a wife that was just spiraling downward. Sure. And I felt bad for him. So Okay. Now, are you and Josh on good terms now? Do you guys chat at all? We have. We've talked a little bit here and there. I think the last time I talked to him was a couple, like, I think a year and a half ago or something like that. Yeah, I talked to him. um, Like, uh, we have a we have an okay relationship. I wouldn't say that it's bad. Okay, well, that's Um, that's something. And how old are your oldest daughters? Uh, My oldest daughter, she will be 11 in April. Okay, and then the, the second to oldest. 
and then she will be eight in October. Okay, so now you just got permission to um, start communicating with them. Yeah, it was from, um, well, it's not that I just got permission to continue to talk to them. I've always had, like, I've had a relationship with them. They used to come and visit me Mm -hmm. and everything like that. But, and then I was a single mom taking care of three kids. Yeah, it's a lot. And they, they, they knew, um, their grandparents knew that it was a lot to take care of. I think I just got a house. And it was me by myself, just got a house, had all three girls, just had a baby. Right. And they just knew it was not going to be a good situation for the girls. Do they live very and, far from you? Um, they live um, in Wyoming. Okay. But um, How far is that from where uh, you are just because I live in New York City and I have no clue where anything is? <laughs> Um, and that's just another state up from Colorado. Okay, so it's They're not far. They're just another state up. It's not far. Um, and I can visit them. It's just been really hard for me just dealing with with um, this man that I've been with. And I've been with him for about six years. Okay, and so this, I, is, this is your husband or your ex-husband? Yes, he is my husband still, and we are going through a divorce Okay, right I'm now. sorry to hear that. Uh, and so you had another baby, and how old is your youngest? My youngest is four, and she will be five in June. Okay, so you're um, splitting from her father, and you had a very tumultuous relationship, apparently, with uh, your husband right now. Yeah, I met him shortly after me and uh, and Josh separated. And Josh were together about six years. Right. And then if you think about how old my daughter is, 11, and then this guy, we would have been together six years. So, right. I, I mean, I separated from Josh, got together with this guy, and then it's just been, um, I mean, to be honest, I mean, he's uh, very emotionally abusive. I'm so um, sorry to this hear that. That's, that's very so. painful to go through. And I think that, um, like I said, a lot of our listeners have gone through a lot of similar things so they could relate to being in a relationship like that. Oh, it's it was it's been horrible. I should have never got married. And when I think when the girls' grandparents found out that I got married, they backed off even more because they knew that this guy was dangerous. He's a lot older than me. Um, How old is he? Uh, Jalen's dad is 41. Okay. He is a 41-year-old guy. And how old, and how old are you? I am 28. Oh, okay. All right, so that, that's, a, that's a significant age difference, but nothing crazy. No, nothing crazy. But, I mean, he's... Um, He's definitely a lot more, I wouldn't even say more mature than I am right. because he's been in and out of jail since I've been with him and very, very aggressive, just a super aggressive guy. I had to, like, it's been really difficult just trying to get me and my daughter away from him as it is. How did you guys so, meet? We met, um, oh God, we met at a Starbucks. Okay, so just randomly, yes. and now this is in Colorado? Randomly, in Colorado. Okay, so you yeah. just met randomly, and sort of dating, and he, he clearly wasn't treating you like that from the beginning. No, 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 it was the honeymoon phase, sure. I'd say. It was super sweet until, like, we started, mo- like, he moved me in together, like, we moved in together really early, mm. maybe within a couple months of us being together. And then I found out what he was doing for money. I mean, it's all in his background and everything like that. Sure. I don't really want to talk about it. No, that's it. fine. So he, you said that he's but, in and out of jail. I'm assuming that there's some kind of uh, drug problem. No, I mean, it's not, it's not drugs. Oh, okay. He is not into drugs. He okay. is into making money legally is what I can say. Right. And, um, abusing women. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. To hear so, that. That's awful. Yeah. And he's not, he's just not a good guy and he's not a good guy to have around little girls. Oh dear. And, um, so I definitely, um, nothing, um, happened with my girls or him, right. but I got them away as soon as possible. Okay. And, um, my youngest, um, she is the only connection that he has to me. Sure. And like we had, we have, a, a protection order on each other 
right now and everything, but um, he and just got out of jail again. Now, does he so, have any? Does he have any visitation with her? Um, what I can say is that he does, but he doesn't use it because he cannot be with me. Okay, right. So I he's understand. what she is. She's a bargaining chip. Sure. To for for me, mm-hmm. just just for just to continue abusing me even more right. is is poor that poor little girl, and so I've been both her mom and dad since she's been born. Right. So I mean, it's just been me and her for um, her whole life. She's known him for six months. Right. Perhaps, maybe. Well, I think that that <laughs> I mean, from what you've told me about it, I think that that's uh, better off. She's much better off like that than to have someone so abusive in her life. So now you said that you got a house by yourself. Are you working? I am working. Um, I am working. I've been at the same job for about a year now. I make medical supplies. Oh, beautiful. So, um, I, I mean, it's a, it's a really good job. I make a pretty good money to support myself and my kids. Thank you. That's great. I appreciate it. We're pro I'm probably trying to go back to school again wow. while working. Um, just, just to get um, an additional degree under my belt because I did go to college and I am a, a certified dog trainer as well. Oh, that's but so I just cool. didn't. Thank you. Yeah. I just didn't graduate high school. It was so difficult for me. I tried six different times to graduate. It's very hard. You know, I, Ebony, I'll tell you, so, uh, I'm 35 years old and I just went back to college to finish my degree. And I got to tell you, it is so hard to get back into school after being away for so long. Yes. It is so difficult. And I was thinking about it. And I'm like, if I had to take the GED test right now, I don't think I would pass it. It's pretty hard. Yeah. <laughs> they said it's gotten, it's gotten harder. So I can't even, so. I, you know, a lot of people think like, oh, just get your high school diploma. And it's like, it's not as easy as you think, especially when you've been out of it for so long. Yeah. There's algebra. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, so that's Definitely. so great that you're doing well right now. So you're going through the divorce. You have a place. You have custody of your youngest daughter. And hopefully you'll be in touch with your two oldest soon. Yes. Oh, that's yes, such great definitely. news. Um, I have, I've been very active in therapy and they've started me doing some EMDR treatment. Yes. Oh, that's so, so interesting. Yes. That's something that I was looking into. And I know a lot of our listeners are really fascinated by it. Did you start that yet? Um, we have, um, we're still, uh, working on my safe space, okay. but we literally are starting next week and I, I go weekly to therapy. Oh, that's so and beautiful. So, so for, um, for people that don't understand what that is, what I, um, understand that it is, is kind of some kind of laser light therapy that they do in your eyes. Uh, and it's for post-traumatic stress disorder. Yes. Um, I mean, it's, it's not just with your eyes. It can also be with vibrations with your hands as well. And, um, and also if you're touched in different places while you're thinking about those thoughts, um, it, it helps to, I think this is what my doctor said. It goes, your, your, those toxic memories and stuff are just rotating in your amygdala and they need to go to your hippocampus. Okay. And so they just keep rotating until you can finally move them. Ebony, let's move them. Let's get them into our hips. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) That's so exciting. I'm really, I'm really proud of you. This is great. So listen, on a lighter note, so we obviously, what I told you, we just watched your 16 and pregnant. What is going on with the style of clothing? We were trying to figure it out. So obviously we're a little bit older than you. But 2009, what yes. was going on with the bell bottoms and the high tops, Ebony? Uh, I don't, I don't even know anymore. <laughs> I haven't, like when I look back at that time, I think I was hiding my curves because now I love my curves. Right. And, but before I, I would hide them away and I had friends that were a lot smaller than me right. and I was always the bigger girl, but now I you love tiny, my curves. You were tiny, but I didn't feel that way because the friends that I had, I also had toxic friends at that time, right. and they were tiny, tiny. I mean, size probably three, right. five, 
something super tiny. Oh, and I'm like, like see, I don't you know. You look so small to us. And then when you were the scene where you were trying on your prom dress and you were crying in the dressing room, we were like, what is the problem? She looks great. I think it was just it's the the girls when you grow right. up with a different like with those type of girls. Kind, in did your you grow life, up with kind of like mean girls? I mean, yeah, but I wow. mean, they 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 weren't really um, supportive right. of what you want to do. I had a couple best friends growing up, but then like when I got pregnant and stuff, they kind of faded off and like, they didn't, they didn't know what to do. They want to be my friend because I'm having a baby, sure. you know? Yeah. So yeah. And then you're just kind of left there alone. And like, I think a lot of other moms would, would know how that feels. Like it's like you had friends right? and then you have this baby and then it's all about this baby. And they're like, Oh, I want to go out. I want to go have fun. Right. Especially but at the age that you had the baby. Sure. Yeah, and we we couldn't go out and do those things. And death I had my second one by 20 um by 21. Right. I had her by 21 and then just just able to drink and um be uh I don't know, an adult. Right. But I've just uh, I've only been having kids and so it's difficult to just be a young an person. adult yeah. and, and a young, a young adult sure. at that. And then living life and poor, me and Josh, we just, that's pretty much why we separated. We grew, like we grew up together, yeah. but then we like, I have nothing negative to say about him because he, he's a wonderful, he's a wonderful guy. He's up there taking care of the girls and doing right. what I can do. But I mean, like, Oh man, we we were so young together, and we had so much put on our plate at so young. Yeah, of course. Do you have do you have some great friends now? I do. I have some really good friends now. Um, I made some really good ones through my work. Um, really healthy relationships. So, oh, that's so um, I, I've definitely learned how to do that. Is make really good relationships, and that's. I wanted to get in a healthy place for my girls. Well, you see, you because, sound like, great. You do sound thank great. Thank you. We don't really hear a lot of success stories, especially, you know, I don't know if you keep up with Teen Mom or if you watch anything. You know, there are a lot of girls that have gone down the wrong path. I don't watch it. I don't keep up with it. Um, I used to, but as soon as I seen, like, the girls that um, I was on the show with, mm -hmm. their fame got to them. Some and of them, I yeah. Was, yeah, I just couldn't, um, I couldn't get behind that because sure. when we were all together hanging out in the hotel room, like right before the reunion show, mm -hmm. those were the girls that I loved. Right. Those girls, so different, so different from what they're, they're now. Yeah, it's, and, it's funny because, you know, a lot of times when there isn't an episode on that week, we go back and we, we start um, going through the 16 and pregnant and to see 10 years later, uh, the, you know, the way the fame changed them, the way that, you know, the relationships change them and motherhood. And it, it is very, very different. It is. It, it's, it's hard to like, like we had such a good time in New York. Like who, we were, had, who, who were the girls that you would hang out with and like who were your close friends? Um, we really liked Macy. Right. Um, me and Whitney were really close, loved her. Our son, uh, her son and my daughter were so tiny Aww. at the time of um, the show or the reunion right. show. They fit in the stroller together Aww. in the car seat. <laughs> and they, they were just adorable um Jocelyn's first kiss was Macy's son. Ah, oh, Bentley. He gave her a little kiss. Thank yes, you. Be Bentley gave her a kiss. I mean, we had a really good time. We were just being teenagers with kids. Sure. Did do you keep <laughs> like, in touch with any of the girls? We used to. Right. We used to keep in touch. I keep Whitney on my Instagram page. She okay. knows that that's my real one. I right. I don't. There's a lot of fake pages out there, but the only one that I have is my Instagram page is the way I keep in touch with a lot of my fans. Right. And so, um, and just to keep them up to date on my life. Cause I stayed away from Twitter. I don't really get onto my Facebook a lot. Right. Um, so, cause I'm just a working mom and just trying to get my stuff together. Of so, course, of course. Well, we support yeah. you in that. That is, this is such a nice 
story. Um, and I'm so glad you're working on yourself. And we would love to hear more from you. I mean, keep in touch because we'd love yeah, to definitely. hear more about everything that's going on. And, you know, I, I really do hope that you get to connect with the girls and, you know, everything figures itself out and you get to, um, you know, finalize your divorce. I think we should party for that. What do you think? Yeah, uh, definitely <laughs> party for that one. Uh, definitely. <laughs> and if so. you're ever in New York City, you're uh, you're always welcome to come back and, uh, you know, let us know what's going on. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much. Oh, of course. Ebony, did you want to plug your social media? I don't know if you want people following you um, to see your of progress. Of course. If, if they definitely wanted to follow me, um, I, it's my one and only social media that I will, you know, be on. I post pictures of my youngest and myself. And then when I do get in contact with my older two, I will keep you guys up to date for, with them too. Great. Um, just I, right now I'm keeping their privacy. I do get oh, pictures understood. of them, but until I can, you know, just have a better relationship with them, I'm going to keep their life private. Yes. But, um, mine and my, uh, Instagram is mommy, uh, M a M I mm-hmm. underscore E B Y. Okay, great. Ebony, and that and that's uh that is on Instagram. So oh, yeah. Ebony, this is so so great. Um, like I said, make sure you keep in touch and we're rooting for you. Let us know if we could do anything you. to help you. Of course. Thank you guys so much. Great, thank you so much. Out. All right, great. We'll talk soon. All right, thanks. Bye bye. Bye bye.